Hey everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back here, and it is one of the great privileges of this job that I get to talk to the winners of these Survivor seasons, and I'm here with our latest winner from Survivor 45, D Valladares. D, how are you? Hello, I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here. This is awesome. Yeah, really excited to have the chance to chat and have yeah. a longer conversation about your incredible game uh, back from Survivor 45. We got to talk for a little bit uh, the day after the season was over, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, this is going to be fun to go back through uh, some of the things that we can really uh, get to pick your brain about. Yes, this is exciting because it'll be much longer than the day after the finale. Well, it'll it'll be longer. Uh, so we'll I don't know about much longer, but uh, let's let's get into some things. Uh, the yeah. yeah, let's 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 talk. And you know, always always good to talk to the champ. Yay! I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, D. I was listening to uh, some of your preseason stuff, and you had told Mike Bloom that you were listening to some of the winner interviews that we had done before yeah. uh, to get ready for Survivor. And now, uh, now here, here you are. Yeah, it's so weird. I feel like I think I said it in my interviews. I I wouldn't even answer questions sometimes because I was so damn nervous. But I feel like it happened in my mind so many times before it actually happened in reality. Um, and that was like part of my big thing was the prep was just put myself in that position. And no matter what happens on the Island, like I can overcome it. And that's like the way that I went into playing survivor. Would love to hear from you a little bit about uh, the Reba group. And really uh, in the new era of survivor, there's has not really been a group that has been like as tight as uh, the four Rebas were in this game. Like, did you know, did you get a sense that this was going to be such a tight group? I did get a sense that it would be a tight group. I think naturally we kind of like got along naturally very well. And we, the four of us, like I got along with Julie really well. And then me and Austin and then Drew and I would have a conversation and it was just like, this is like, we need to stick together. And I, we've had conversations in the beginning of like, Hey guys, let's stick together. It'll get to a point where we're going to have to like go against each other, but we'll figure that out later. Right now, let's focus on the game right now. And I feel like obviously they, they can't play that because it would be too obvious that like such a tight, like alliance and alliance of four is going to like continue on into the game. Um, but it was very natural to be honest. And like, I also feel like we had like an enemy in common, which was Sifu. Yeah. <laughs> enemy in the game because he was always you know i wish people saw more of him because og reba would be so boring without sifu like in hindsight this guy would always wake up so early in the morning um idol hunt create fake idols i think he made more than 10 fake idols that we actually ended up finding that the audience doesn't know about um so that in itself got us like very tight too because we had someone you know you can't always everyone be at the top you need to have people at the bottom and people that you can vote out in case we lose challenges um yeah. so it was kind of very natural for us to 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 get together well i like, think that was something that for us the viewers that was kind of confusing because that there was so much talk about that there was so much fear of sifu and he's gonna yeah. play an idol and at the time we were like but you you all found the idol yeah. you all have it yeah 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 it was it was weird because when you guys, when the audience saw that, it happened, that happened like 15 minutes before Tribe Switch. Mm -hmm. So we always thought that Sifu had an idol because we hadn't found it yet. Um, and even when we did find it, like Julie and I found the clue and then the boys found the idol. Even then, like, at least for me, I was paranoid and I was kind of like playing the game. I was like, I rather play um like defensively like knowing that he may potentially have an idol what if this is a season with like multiple idols in in an island like i was just constantly trying to think like okay well i don't want to get screwed over at tribal council just because of an idol right um but yeah there there was a lot that wasn't shown in, in, in things were like a little bit different we found the the clue to the idol 15 minutes before tribe switch before we okay. had the truth swap so it was really right before so we were still like on a high of like, um, does he have an idol? Did he not? Even though we found it ourselves. But, you know, when you're out there, you cannot be too sure of anything, especially like in the new era. Like I do not I would not pass up anything through Jeff like that he thinks about.
throwing yeah. Hands. Yeah. So all right, you said you found the idol about 15 minutes before you went <laughs> on the time swap, but how, how long did the uh, process go on of you all working together to find the idol? Oh, that's a great question. Cause I think Austin found it like the third or fourth day. And then we were like a couple days. It was like three, three, mm. four days that we were all searching together. And we would like have shifts, like two people, like someone babysits, two people go, um, <clears throat> But it took it took a long time. And honestly, like so, so grateful that it happened right before the tribe swap, because had that not happened, who knows, like either how tight we would have been yeah. or, you know, I mean, yeah, eventually we didn't have to like actually use it, but it, it still helped us play the game a little bit like harder because we had like ammo. You know what I mean? Like we, yeah. we were we had some defense. But did the work that the four of you did together really help cement that bond moving forward? A hundred percent. Of course it did, because you're out there like I you will never know until you play Survivor how how close these things bond you. Like when you find an idol with your person, like in an alliance, and then Jay comes in 15 seconds later after finding the hammer and the string and like doing all of this in a span of like 15 minutes it's absolutely insane and not getting caught. It does bring you together because it, it's like some, uh, it's like a camaraderie, you know, it's like, Oh my God, we found an idol. We're going to stick to it together. Even Austin was like, Hey, we'll, we'll switch it between us if we have to. Um, now you're sharing valuable information. So now you're closer. Inevitably you're closer because you, you don't want to mess up anything in the Alliance and fear that someone else is going to come. And you know, what if like, one of us talked like said something about the idol which none of us did the whole game but you really never know but it does bring you closer especially when we knew we always anticipated as a four always anticipated like we might get a tribe swap like this might happen this might happen in this challenge we were always talking up like different scenarios um so that that definitely did bond us and like i said you'll never know until you're out there that high of finding an idol and especially like using it within your alliance amazing amazing the show didn't really paint the re before as having like a leader one person yeah. who was in charge did you feel like out there that there was one person who was most calling the shots for re before um that's an interesting question because i feel like it was the reason why the re before is was so good and worked for us is because we gave and we took we gave and we took the audience only sees like Kelly, the boys, Kendra, like D and Julie, like it, there's so much more that happened. Like there is no say that like Julie and I were social, Austin also social, uh, Drew strategic, like uh, Austin physical. We all had a little bit of everything, right? But we all like, we, we were always giving each other options of like, and I'll give an example, like the whole Kelly the whole Kelly, Drew and, and Austin were very big on getting Kelly out. And like, at first I didn't want to, but I'm like, these are my people. I gotta, I gotta stick with them. I can't push back that much. Right. So we always give and we took, um, and like I said, we all had, even at the end of the day, even if we were going to bolt someone out, it benefited all of us. Cause that's one less person in the game. Right. Or if, you know, this was something that wasn't shown in the Kelly vote. I was scared. I was like, Kelly's my shield. She can't leave because then they're coming for me. We just won the poll challenge. Like they're looking at me next. And I had always been hearing my name. And I remember, I think that this also really cemented us. Um, I was telling the three of them, I was like, Kelly is my, my shield. And Julie looks at me, she goes, D, we're your shield. And then I'm like, damn, that's kind of true. Like Julie is my social shield. Austin's my physical shield and Drew's my strategic shield. Like, all right, I'm good. If we stick together and I did truly believe that we would, um, I'll, I'll be fine. And yeah, we were always looking out for one another. It was like a little like spider web. It's like, you, you got to deal with these people, you deal with these people. And then whatever information comes back, we, we tell each other. Um, but I wouldn't say there was one leader. There was a leader in times like you know, like the whole Kendra. Yes, I pushed for her. So in different moments, there were different acts of leadership, but not, it wasn't one leader in all. I think that that's why we worked so well because we give and we took so, so much. Like we understood like, all right, you know what? They're coming for you. We should take this person out, but really it's going to be good for my game if we take the person that's coming for you, you know?
So you told Mike before the start of the game that the person <laughs> that gave you the biggest red flag, do you remember? Yeah, it was Drew. Drew. Yeah. Did he win you over early on? He really did. Drew, I, you know, I I feel I feel for Drew because he had a hard time, you know, hearing things about um his character and stuff and it's like Man, when you when the, Drew, as he was watching the season, yeah, as he was watching the season, right? This was like in air, but it's funny because the Drew that you meet in person is a yeah. completely different Drew than than Game Drew, right? And even Game Drew, like he he's so awesome. Drew's amazing. He won me over. Like I I can't meet someone like we're so different in the way that we grew up. Everything about us is different, but we're fundamentally the same. And I think that that is like the Ariba Four thing too. We were all so different, coming from different places, different ages. You would never expect us to work together. Uh, but Drew, yeah, Drew definitely won me over. I think he won me over pretty quickly. Like day three, I was like, damn, I'm in with Drew. Like we view the game the same way. So I think that was pretty easy for us to like get along. It was such a big part of your story about, uh, you know, the sacrifices that your parents made uh, for you and your brother. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you just uh, give us the from your perspective uh, the story of uh, that you you came here uh, to America as as a child? Yeah, I was born in Cuba, and then my parents brought my brother and I when we were two. They won like a lotto kind of thing back then. Um, but growing up, like. I've watched them struggle so damn much. Like my parents working multiple jobs. Like I would, my mom was like janitor while she was a bus driver. And like my dad would take her food and I'd be with my mom, like cleaning like middle schools and like bathrooms, everything. Like I've, I've watched them struggle so much. Like for me, it's like my whole life was like, I just want to make money so that my parents can chill. Like that, that has been my thing always. And I just want to make sure that they don't work because they, have to but they just work because they want to right um so that's always been my thing and yeah we're we're very close as a family i love them so much they're they're awesome and my brother too um but yeah did the relationship that you have uh with your mom did that spill over to the connection you had with julie that's a great question dang you're good um i can see how yeah um, I've always had a tight bond with my parents. Like they've always been my best friends. Um, and they've always talked to me like a little adult, even if I was like six years old, they've always talked to me like an adult. And I think when I met Julie, um, I wouldn't necessarily just say it was my bond with my mom. Cause it has everything to do with Julie too. And who she is as a person, like she's just so loving when you meet her, you can't help but to love her. And she's so like motherly and natural. Like she can be your mother, but she could also be your best friend. Um, and I can definitely see a resemblance there with my mom because I'm the same way with my mom. Like she's my mom. She knows when to be a mother, but she also knows when to be a best friend. Um, and Julie was like that too. So it was very natural for Julie and I to stick together. I remember when we first started talking strategy in the beginning, we looked at each other. We're like, damn, you're scaring me. Like you're good. But but I trust you. But I trust you. We can be open about these things, right? Because um, when you start playing Survivor, it's it's weird. It's weird. You don't know who to talk strategy with right away. You don't know when to do it, how hard to push. Um, but Julie, like ever since I looked into her eyes, I know this sounds so corny, but when I looked into Julie's eyes, I'm like, she's pure. She's a pure person. And that those are the people that I wanted to play with. Like someone that I could just look into their eyes and be like, all right, we're good. Like, I trust you. You trust me type of thing. <laughs> One of the other interesting things that happened before you all swapped was Caleb came to your tribe and had to uh, give an advantage to somebody and he gave it to Drew. Uh, what was your reaction to Caleb when he came to your tribe? Um, well, we weren't we weren't surprised that Caleb came into our tribe. We were actually trying to guess like who was coming. And as OG Reba, we're like, for sure, Caleb's coming. And this is funny because they didn't they didn't play a lot of things from that that moment we all sat down and we're like all right we need like a story who's at the bottom who doesn't get along so like between the six of us we're we made like a whole lie of like julie was at the bottom you know i was the swing boat like things to tell caleb and we decided as reba to not let caleb talk to us individually and then caleb comes with his little sales 
tactics and it's like hey guys i would love to talk to you individually one-on-one -on -one. and we all looked at each other and it was like the most awkward thing we're like i mean we can't say no because then kayla's gonna know that we're like against him um so we ended up all saying yes and that's when you saw like the scenes of caleb speaking to one of us individually um but <laughs> another thing that wasn't shown in 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 that um in that uh journey for caleb to reba was sifu like it shocked me that he gave that that advantage to drew i thought he would give it to like sifu or or austin because he talked to Sifu and Austin a lot more than he did to the girls. So automatically we're like, all right, Caleb wants to work with the men. He does not want to work with the women. Like we just know it. Right. Um, and then Sifu, when he met Caleb, he shook his hand and he's like, Hey, nice to meet you. I'm Nico. And I'm like, what? Sifu's name is not Sifu. It's Nico. So I remember going back to camp and I'm like, dude, Sifu just introduce himself as Nico. Like, this is a red flag. He doesn't want to work with any of us. Like, we're his OG Reba. We don't even know his name. That's <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so then it did shock me that he gave it to Drew. But I think Drew, I think it, he did a good job at like telling Reba for like, hey, he gave me this. We're working together. Like, we constantly like gave each other reasons to trust one another. Was Caleb very high on your radar after that? Because uh, you do have a lot to do with targeting Caleb. Yeah, Caleb was always high on my radar, just like everybody. <laughs> Caleb, it's just he's so likable. He's so likable, but also too likable. So there is such a thing as being too likable on Survivor because, like, if you work with everyone, you're you're not with me. You're working right. with other people, right? And he is likable. He's in sales right away. We knew it. We're like, this guy's in sales. Um, but yeah, red flag automatically. And the fact that he just came in and was like, let me talk to everyone individually. And and he's a good speaker. You know, he's such a likable guy. I love Caleb. Like, but yeah, he was on my radar since day one, and just like everybody, but um yeah he didn't really have like an alliance so that that was already even bigger red flag you you know yeah. we can pick him up because he can be going behind our backs and working with somebody else yeah let's talk about when you get to the swap and here comes sean and that you feel like okay this is our opportunity we're going to get sifu to uh we're going to blindside him because he might have this idol and then sean decides to jump on an opportunity and uh, make his pitch to leave the game. Yeah, yeah. That was a little bit frustrating because um, the audience was shocked the same way that we were shocked. Like, we didn't really have a heads up. Um, and so in the game, we wanted to get Sifu out because not only because we thought he had an idol, but because we knew that he would be very likely to switch come merge. And yes, he's a big dude or whatever, and other people might come to him, come for him, but... <clears throat> We were just a lot scared that he would be willing to like flip on us, right? Or maybe say like, oh, the, the Reba 4 are very tight. Like we were very scared about that. So in tribal, it was going to be him up until like Sean started giving his speech. And I love Sean as a person. Love, love, love him as a person. But in the game, that's not really my problem. Like if we decide Sifu pre-tribal, like so many things Rob can go wrong during tribal, like Thankfully, Sean left and we, you know, everybody put right. their bolts on him. But what what if there would have been another advantage out in the game or and then maybe by mistake, any of us, right. three, other three would have gone home. So it was very frustrating because you you never switch your bolts unless you do a live tribal and then you talk about it. Right. Um, but it, it was already planned too. like if if Sean, it's me, Julie, Jay, Sifu, Sean. If Sean wants to quit, he can quit tomorrow. We leave. Sifu is gone, right? We vote him out. Sean wants to quit. He could quit tomorrow. <laughs> now that's three people. We knew there was a tribe swap coming or an early merge. We knew because Lulu was killed, crushed, right? Um, but even if we had to do another challenge, which we did talk about um, between us, well, and not Jay, but we talked about it, even if we had to do another challenge and it was me, me, Julie, Jay, we vote up Jay and now it's two yeah. and now we have to merge and Julie and I are safe. Like, okay, that's a little bit, it's a little risky, but you got to take some risks. Right. So yeah. that, that was, it, it was very frustrating because coming back 
from that tribal was the most awkward situation ever. Yeah, the thing that I never quite got was like, was there any communication that was going on between you and Julie and Jay about, hey, stick to the plan at that tribal council? Yeah. So right before the votes were read, which I didn't know that you're not allowed to do this, but right mm -hmm. before the votes, not the votes were read, but right before we voted, you see me saying like, Sipu, like stick to the plan. I know, you know, I know Sean doesn't want to be here, but we can just take him out tomorrow. Like, let's stick to the plan. Sifu, Sifu, Sifu. And it wasn't necessarily to make a big move. It was just because that was the plan. Like, you mm -hmm. don't switch it in tribal. Um, So I did say, like, Sifu, and then, like, it wasn't stuck with. So that was also frustrating. <clears throat> but something that also wasn't shown was after that tribal council, we come back, and it's just, like, all right, keep a straight face. You, Sifu cannot know that it's me, even though I know that Sifu thinks it's me or Jay because him and Jay in the game, they didn't see eye to eye. Um, so one thing that wasn't shown was Julie like batting an eye for me. Like she, she told in, she told in front of Sifu and Jay, she goes, D, I voted for you. And I go, why would you do that? Like, okay, I understand. So we had to argue, right. As to why she would vote for me. Um, so they didn't show that. They also didn't show the fact to make that Sean seem like he was lying. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. Right. To make it seem like I wasn't like it was Sean's vote for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To cover for me. But we decided like, yo, that that's not Sifu knows that you wouldn't vote for me, even if it's like to throw away. Um, and then we had decided at the beach, like, all right, let's let's pin it on Jay, even though Jay had already mentioned to the audience that. She was going to take the cover, but that was the plan anyway to to, you know, put throw Jay under the bus because Sifu and Jay just didn't get along eye to eye. So it would have been the most believable. Um, but, yeah, they didn't show a lot of like Julie talking to Sifu about like, hey, it wasn't D, it was Jay. They didn't show any of that, which is like kind of sad because they sh there was a lot of time put in into that vote for Sifu not to think it was me. What was the relationship that you and Julie had with Jay uh, during this uh, first pre-merge part of the game? Yeah, it sucks because everyone sees like that we were like mean towards her. And that was not the case at all because we got along as human beings really, really well. We just knew um, there was a lot that wasn't shown. Not we, I'm going to say like personally, I felt like Jay was willing to play survivor a lot more than like julie and i together like i felt much closer to julie than i did with jay in the game and jay was more willing to like flip and a reason that also like alarm bells rang um was when jay went on the journey with kelly and austin jay came, jay comes back and jay was like i don't know what lie she said but it was like a huge lie um, something about that. They dragged coconuts. I don't know. But Julie and I believed her. We were like, dang, we kind of believe Jay. You know, we were kind of like going back and forth and Sifu didn't believe Jay. Um, and then it wasn't until the tribe swap. Well, it wasn't until the merge that Austin comes back and was like, yeah, like they all lied. This is Jay, Jay lied. This is not what happened. So we knew that Jay would be the reason we didn't want her that like going into merge was because one of the Sifu vote, anything that can come back to you cannot be in the game of survivor. Unfortunately, yeah. it's just the way it is, right? Like we needed her out because she knew the truth with the Sifu vote. It's going to come back to us. And two, she lied about the journey. So had Jay, I think not lied about that journey and been like forward with Julie and I, we would have protected her more in the sense of like, okay, well, she's trying to play the game with us. So once she comes back from that journey and she lies to us, we're like, she's she's going to flip. She's going to flip. And you can't have anyone at Merge that flips because people know how strong, you know, we got to be very careful with the Reba 4. Now we got to be careful with the whole Sifu vote. There was just a lot of little things that we had to be very careful with. <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't that we didn't like Jay. We freaking love Jay. And she was so sweet, so awesome. Um, but she just knew too much. She's like... It's just the way it is.
Let's talk about what happened uh, when you all got to the mergatory. And so uh, you're on the losing side of that challenge and you're one of the people uh, that can be voted for. What, what did you want to have happen at that merge vote? Mergatory vote. Um, after the challenge, you mean? Yes. Yes. Were um, you Caleb all the way? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to think because so much has happened. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, I was Caleb all the way. I was Caleb all the way um, because of the fact that he threw my name out at tribal. That pissed me off because it's one thing to, yeah. to throw names out like, you know, at that point in the game, there's some people that aren't even playing Survivor that don't even know what's going on. So the fact that he said that at tribal where like tensions are high and like that's when the truth really comes out at tribal. She he mentioned Julie J and I, and that pissed me off because it's like, damn, there's people that didn't even know about Julie and I, and now they're like thinking about Julie and I and Jay, you know. So that really pissed me off. So it's one thing to throw my name out, every name gets thrown out in Survivor, like who cares, right? But at Tribal, where people are like still lost, you know, they don't know what is going on. Um, <clears throat> that pissed me off, but also, um. I knew that like Caleb really wanted to work with the boys and that was not good for my game. If yeah. he wanted to get in with Austin, especially. Right. He seemed to be saying that, okay, well, Jay should go because, and it, it would be a good move for you and Julie, because that would be, you'd be lowering your threat level to have uh, one, one less of the Reba women around. Yeah. So I can see his standpoint, which makes sense from his standpoint, um, but also from our standpoint, another reason we initially threw out Jay's name is because we wanted to weaken Reba because we knew that Lulu's a mess. We knew that there were a lot of holes in Bello. So we decided as the four of us, we're like, if we can make them think that we're as dysfunctional as them, that's great for us because yeah. that way we can get way more information from other people. So again, unfortunately, like, it was just Jay who was the easy target to throw out under the bus. Um, and yeah, I mean, it helped that inevitably it helped that he mentioned our names. Cause it's like, yeah, like we want Jay out. Yeah, you're right. You're actually absolutely right. Yeah. So Caleb gets his <laughs> shot in the dark and then we have the revote where uh, Jay goes home. Uh, but did you consider uh, going with Emily there instead, or that it was just like open and shut that it was going to be Jay? No, no, no. I didn't consider. I don't think any of us considered that it would be Emily. Um, I think even Kendra, she ended up telling me after the game that she like threw my name out there, but like nobody kind of listened. Mm -hmm. um, there were names thrown out, but no, I never considered Emily. It was always going to be like Caleb first. And then obviously the shot in the dark happened. So it was just like naturally Jay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the, after you have the, uh, tribal council with the shot in the dark uh you have the split tribal councils where you and kelly uh both go up there and win immunity and uh you win your first individual immunity challenge because i felt like that this was really the beginning of like your upward trajectory in yeah. the game really uh yeah. this the winning this immunity for the first time and then also i felt like you really then uh, made your mark on getting Caleb out in the split tribal council when there's some discussion of should we should we go other places and, and I, I felt like that this is really the beginning of like uh, your end uh, end of the game. Yeah, definitely. I that was the beginning of my heart dropping because anytime you hear your name out there, you're like your heart drops, even if it's like even if you're not the main target. Like you know, when you hear your name out there, your heart drops. And it wasn't until the poll challenge that now everybody saw me because I had already been hearing my name as a social threat um, because I was like talking to everyone during the merge when we're all meeting each other. But now I hear my name as like physical threat. Now like D's here to play. So I'm like, damn, people are really going to be looking at me. But I remember during the poll challenge when we looked at each other, I was like, all right, as long as we're split in a way that we're all safe as the re before. And we were, we were split perfectly and then Caleb in mine I'm like I gotta hold on to this pole until Caleb's down at mm. least until Caleb falls so in my head Caleb needed a fall first before I could even think about winning the challenge um but yeah that was the beginning of yeah it, it's hard because like 
people see that I'm just saying like names, but really I was hearing my name every damn day out there. And I was like, let's go. Cool. Like there has to be a shinier object out there. There has to, like every time you hear your name, you got to put it on somebody else. There's always a shinier object. Um, but yeah, that, that was the beginning of, of my game for sure. Did you start to have a bond with Katura at this point when, you know, Katura is getting pulled from Jake and Caleb <clears throat> to go with their, uh, you know, tie vote rock draw that uh, Jake wanted so badly to save Caleb? Did, did you and Julie really have a lot to do with uh, getting her to not do that? Automatically, when we met Katora, um, this wasn't shown, but Katora, Julie, and I were at the water well, and we were talking about, you know, this was post merge, and we were talking about the whole lost spring and how they found the the idol and they kept her out. Um, I remember Julie and I were like laughing. We weren't laughing at her, but we were kind of like laughing at her because we're like, Katora, that's kind of like hilarious <laughs> that they would do that, but also very messed up. Um, so we did get very close to her because she confided in us to tell us these things. And then Julie and I, not only like, did we like her as a person, but we're like, oh shoot, she's also at the bottom. Like we can pick her up. Like she's clearly at the bottom. Like she does not trust these people because they didn't tell her about, you know, the idol. And it's hard out there to like, not take things personally. It really is hard out there to not take things personally. Um, so she felt left out and we, like bonded with her and you know there I feel like our they didn't really show a lot of like our relationship we were just I don't know why but we were always cracking jokes always talking about life um and even the strategy I feel like it was fun for them to at least show the whole Drew like three to one because it's like that's how we were always we were always cracking jokes and and having a blast um but yeah it, it was very it was very natural for us to like get along with her and also, like, I feel like we made her feel very safe, too. She, you know, she needed a home and we were like, come with us because we need you and you need us. So let's work together, figure something out. So. OK, after uh, Caleb goes home, uh, then on the other side of things, uh, Sifu goes home. What was your reaction to Sifu got voted out at the split tribal? Um, I'm very glad that I wasn't the one that had to like vote him out because I already tried once. Um, it was sad, but it was also like all right, one person's out that I knew would like flip. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anytime someone's out, that's not you. you you're sad, but. Yeah. You know, D, I just thought of this now. Um, yeah. If, you know, it could have been like flip a coin of Caleb on the jury versus Sifu on the jury. If Sifu is yeah. on the jury, does he vote for you or for Austin? I don't know. You know, I've never asked him that question. I really don't know. Because I know that like. Um, he could have been a fourth Austin vote. Yeah, he could have. He 100% could have. Um, Sifu and I, we, it wasn't shown a lot of our banter. We did get along really well. Um, and it, he ended up like growing on me. So when he left, I was actually like, you know, a little sad. I was like, damn, that sucks. But at the same time, like, I got to think of the game. Um, but he ended up like growing on me. But I, I do think he could have voted for Austin. I do think he could have voted for Austin. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What a what a, what a little thing of like which person in the split tribal council. And, and of yeah. course, you won the you won the challenge. So yeah. it got to be the person that from your group who ultimately yeah. ends up getting to stay. But uh, yeah. yeah, like a little uh, like a little microscopic so thing. Beautiful. Like you never really know. You never know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you talked about how Kelly was a shield for you. You didn't want to ultimately uh, vote Kelly out. And this was, you know, one of the biggest blind sides of the season, yeah. the, the Kelly vote. And, and I understand, you know, you and, and Kelly are, uh, act, you know, have become very close. Yeah. Uh, so how did they ultimately convince you that Kelly was going to be the right person to vote out? Um, okay. So we knew that Austin, Jay and Kelly had gone on a journey right? And we knew the truth about the journey. So we knew that they were all lying, like J Jay and Kelly were lying. I remember Kelly and I, that's also another relationship that wasn't shown. Like from the moment that we met at the merge, we gravitated towards each other that we had to tell ourselves, dude, let's just, we cannot hang out. We cannot be seen next to each other because we, we just, even when we're not talking about the game, it's just like our energies are like, we, we like being around each other. And it felt like I had a best, she reminded me of my best friend from home. Um, and it kind of was like, all right, we can't be seen together. And people were already talking about both of us. Um, but Kelly and I, 
So I knew that she went on this journey. Um, something that wasn't shown is I sit Kelly down after the journey. Um, and we were at the beach and I go, Kelly, I want to work with you. And I got the numbers, but you got to tell me what happened at the journey. And I already knew the truth. I already knew the entire truth from Austin, but I wanted to see either how good of a liar she was or whether she was capable of telling me the truth. Okay. And she did it. She was like, yeah, we tried coconuts and this and that. And I remember looking at her and thinking to myself, damn, if I didn't know the truth, I would believe this girl. Like this girl is that freaking good. What a boss move to say, call, ask her, tell me what happened. Yeah, no. Well, so it's funny because I can see why she wouldn't tell me because I was just like, I got the numbers. Tell me what happened. But she is so in her head, she was like, D's not giving me information. But she also didn't ask me for information. I was and was like, OK, what who are you working with? What numbers do you have? I just was like in my head, I was like, Kelly, I got the numbers like I want to work with you. And I was more than willing to work with her. And even if I had to go against like Austin, because mm-hmm. I really liked her and I liked the way she viewed the game. Um, but the, she was so good of a liar. I remember coming back to Julie and I was like, Julie she does have to go. Like at this point, her name was already out there. We were thinking about like voting for her. And I remember telling Judy, this girl's too good. She has to go. And then another thing was putting my feelings aside of like wanting to work with Kelly. We knew we needed to vote her out because of the amulet and it was going to turn into an idol. And if we have another second idol in the game, what can't we do as a four? What can't we do? And, you know, we have, the four of us have way too much valuable information to go against each other. Like we knew very early on that we needed each other. So once we have that second idol, you know, it, I just think Kelly was just at the wrong place at the wrong time because she was way too well positioned and way too good to to like be, like to vote her out. But she was just that journey, that journey, that amulet really was like, for me, for me, as you know, I was like, all right, she needs to go. But also the boys were very scared of the position in her game and our relationship, like Kelly and I's relationship. Because, you know, Kelly and, and me, you know, that's not good for them. It's just so many little things that isn't shown, you know, that that's yeah. it goes much more deeper. All right. So after Kelly is gone, you're down to just nine people. You yeah. all end up uh, split into the groups of three. And this is when yeah. Austin gives Julie the idol. And we never really got your perspective on the Julie's idol. It was a lot of like Austin and Drew from, from our perspective in the audience, Austin, you're talking about, can you, can you believe she didn't give us back the idol? But were you, cause I could imagine that you're saying to Julie, Julie, you keep the idol. It's your, it's your idol now. Don't give it back <laughs> to them. Well, technically we found the clue to the idol. So, Technically, yeah, we gave it, but who helped find that? It was Julie and I. So I thought it was a boss move. I don't even, I don't think I remember telling Judy, like, keep it. She just, that was her move. And I was like, good for you. Like, that's badass. Don't give it back. And then we ended up discussing, like, the moment that the boys ask us for that back is the moment that they're going to turn on us. But we also knew that the boys were too smart to ask for the idol back. So everyone's giving them crap for not asking for it back, but you do not ask for an idol back because what does that tell me? That you're coming against us, right? Like you're coming for us. Um, No, that was 100% Julie's move. And I thought it was so badass because I feel like I would have been a little bit more sensitive in the way of like, do you want it back? Or you know what I mean? Because of like the Reba 4 relationship. Oh, you froze mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, that was totally her move. And and we were like, yeah, no, you can't yeah. do it back. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> at this vote, uh, this is when uh, you are pushing for Kendra to yeah. go home. Yeah. So this is interesting because it's shown that I just want Kendra because she says my name, which is true. Kendra was coming for me hard. And I knew she was coming for me hard. But I already had my suspicions about Kendra, not because she was necessarily coming for me, but um, my first red flag with Kendra was the Caleb vote. When Caleb shot, Kendra wanted Caleb out. She was one of the first people to mention Caleb's name. And then when Caleb's shot in the dark worked, the first person to celebrate the shot in the dark was Kendra. Like, oh, shoot, it worked, this and that. 
And I remember seeing that and I'm like, why is this girl celebrating too hard? This is this is a red flag. And yeah, but I think she would have done that if anybody got yeah, she would have, of course. But here is where it gets a little deeper. You always have to pay attention on Survivor, the people that talk right after tribal. How long do they talk? Who do they talk to? Everything you have to be hyper fixated on and hyper aware. Yeah. After Caleb's shot in the dark worked, Kendra was the first one on the beach with Caleb sitting down doing damage control, which was which was weird because it's like, Kendra, you wanted him out, right? So that was my first red flag of Kendra. But even a step further than that, when what what you what the audience didn't see was, you know, people saw, oh, Kendra's saying my name, she's saying my name, but it's not just that. Kendra was way too perceptive for my liking. Way too perceptive. Kendra has, you know, she has innate ability mm-hmm. to feel things and and to really know what's going on she is the first person like it was talked about with emily and kelly but she was the first person to really hint at austin and i and not just hint at us but start talking about it so once i heard that so it's shown on the beach that julie comes to me and says to me kendra's coming for you hard and 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 austin or whatever but it wasn't shown when the whole 333 when Jake um Drew and I were back at camp Drew sits next to me and Drew was like DK uh Kendra's saying that you have a crush on Austin and I'm like oh this girl has to go she has to go because this is bad for my game for people to start viewing Austin and I as a pair which for now nothing really has happened and then it's also hard because production hasn't asked me anything but why haven't they asked me anything because there wasn't anything between Austin and I that yeah. that needed to be asked. Like production can't ask you out of thin air what's going on with you and Austin unless Austin and I do something about it, right? Either physically or we talk about it. So I was like stuck between a rock and a hard place of like, how do I push for Kendra without talking about Austin and I, even to Julie or to anyone else? And the thing that I can come up with is she's saying my name. She's yeah. coming for me, right? That's all I could really say. Um, but yeah. really, I wanted her out because of her perception. And she was way too perceptive and, and caught on to Austin too, too quick. Was it the fact that she was able to do it? Or was it like where it's like, oh, I'm scared of her because she's able to like sense these things? Or was it the fact that she actually was like raising that threat level? She was raising. So if, you know you don't want anyone to view you as a duo or a showman. It's like that. We have up until that point, we've done such a great job at the re before just never talking during the day and only getting up at night, two, three in the morning, not sleeping for Kendra to come and be like, D has a crush on Austin. And then people vote me out because of, of Austin and I being a duo. Right. It was because mostly because of that. And also like, if she goes and yaps her mouth, that means she's not going to work with me. So I don't need you in this game. You know what I mean? But it was mostly with the fact that up until that point, I had already been hearing my name of social, strategic, physical. I was already like, oh, my God, I'm fighting every day to put the name on somebody else for her to come in. And now people view me as a threat with Austin. That to me was like she has to go like there is no other option. It has to be her. Okay. But the prophecy of Kendra, <laughs> she said that, okay, D and Austin, they're going to get together. And what? that it turned out that yes. she was, she was right. She was and, right. but it's such an unusual thing in the history of the show, you know, where we've had other couples get together, you know, yeah. and you talked about Robin Amber, but Robin Amber happened on day one. And I could tell you, cause I was there. Okay. Um, but nothing has ever happened with like, and day 20 is what you and Austin always talked about. There were six days left in the game. Yeah. I mean, um, could, w- could you have like, uh, tabled this for like, uh, like, and held <laughs> off till, Hey, can I call you next week? <laughs> Right. The thing is that the days are so much longer out there. Um, And also, I feel like Austin and I, you know, it got to a point where we felt comfortable. Once we had the majority, we're like, all right, we can finally like that day 20 where people really saw like the whole conversation. We didn't like we slept, but we were out there for hours talking hours. So it kind of helped, you know, to kind of have someone there because 
all day my mind would not stop working even when i was going to bed it was like who did i talk to today who did i lie to today who lied to me who didn't i talk to what you know who looked at me during travel who didn't look at me during travel your mind is constantly at like an altered state out there and to have him there like really helped you know it really helped and it also really helped to know that at least for me to have two people in the game at that point like knowing that they would never vote for me because I would never vote for them, Judy and, and, yeah. and Austin. Um, so yeah, I could have waited six more days, but when you're in that moment, you're also like a part of you is like, I'm young, like we're having fun. We're on survivor. Like, look at the damn stars. Like you really are living, uh, in, in like an alternate universe. You, yeah. you really are. And at that point to be frank, like you don't care, you don't care. It's like, all right, six more days. Like we did this for 20 days. We could do it for six more days. Okay. So I'm going to skip ahead past uh, the Bruce vote and Emily, uh, you know, is sort of like uh, spearheading that vo uh, vote to get Bruce out. But so you end up then having this information, okay, that there is going to be the vote coming against Julie. And we know about how then you are the one to tell Julie to play the idol. So could you, you just talk a little bit about your decision of, uh, about whether or not to tell Julie, like, was that a hard decision for you? No, it wasn't a hard decision because in my mind, in my mind, it wasn't, you know, when I heard that information, it was like 10 minutes before tribal, like this happened so fast. Like my heart is racing right now, thinking about <laughs> thinking about it. So in my head, it wasn't like, make a big move in my head. It was like, save my number one. I got to save Julie, not only because I need to save her. Cause I don't want her out of this game, but two, like, this is my number one. If she's out, I'm so vulnerable. Um, but the initial thought was save Julie, no matter what save Julie. So it was, <clears throat> it was very fast because they were supposed to babysit us. Um, and they didn't, and what wasn't shown is every single person, Austin came up to me first to tell me the news, like to break the news for me. And then everyone knew how close Julie and I were. So uh, Emily came and was like, hey, we're going to vote her out. And then I was like, Emily, but I can't write her name. You know, I'm here like acting stupid, like I'm taking it. Like when people are telling you things, you're supposed to take it. And I remember um, I told Emily and I'm like, Emily, I can't write Julie's name down. Like, and Emily's like, that's fine. Write my name down. And then that's when I was like, Emily doesn't know about the other idol. Maybe she knows about one, but she may does not know about yeah. another idol. Like they're really not like thinking through this. So it was very hard, like in the sense, like it wasn't hard for me to make the decision to tell Julie. What was hard for me was I might blow up my game because I don't know, you know, in that moment, your mind is just racing through different emotions, uh, through different options, all while having to tell her this in like a span of like five minutes or less. Cause Austin, I don't remember who was babysitting us, but they went to the beach. And that's when I tell Julie, Julie, sit down, like put your best acting face on. And then we can't talk like like You need to have so much trust in someone like within her and I to tell each other this information and go through with it like insane. And then that's when you see Julie come to me because I was going to get water and she runs to me and she was like, why don't I just write Austin's name down? And I'm like, no, you cannot do that. And like, I really honestly, looking back at the show, I'm like, damn, I sounded so mean. And like, no, do this, like do this, nothing else. But when your back is against the wall, like if Austin would have left, first of all, I would have felt like complete shit. Cause like I blew up his game and he was trusting me with valuable information, but also like we needed each other still. There was still more game to be played. Um, so yeah, looking back, it's like, when your back is against the wall, you really don't know how you will react and how you will talk to someone. But also like Julie was my person, like in that moment, like I knew how to be like, no, trust me, like just trust. And I was going to take her to the end, no matter what. And I was going to take Austin to the end, no matter what. So it was, it was crazy. It happened right before tribal, like the craziest thing ever. How confident were you <laughs> that she was not going to write down Austin's name? So I feel like you can never be too confident, but I was like 99% sure okay. that she wasn't going to write. Yeah. Him. Cause she, you know, I was saving her. Like I was giving her this information. Cause if it wasn't 
Emily, it was going to be her. Like everyone wrote her name down. Like mm. it was going to be her. So I think a part of her was like, you know, she's she's trusting me with this information. And, and she also knew that we still needed each other in the game. Like it wouldn't have been smart for us to go to war against each other. Not not in that moment. Yeah. D, one yeah. of the things that, that you did that I thought was really smart was when you voted for Julie, that you were sort of like thinking like another move ahead of that after that tribal council, then you were going to come back and then play up that you were upset that she was going to come after you next. Sure. And um, that was a uh, really, really, uh, I thought a, a smart move. How did you come up with that? It happened I have, I can't even tell you, I feel like the angels were watching over me. Like it just happened in the span of like, when it really I helped sell that you didn't tell her. Yeah. I, I had to cover my ass too. Like I'm here saving my number one, but I also have to cover my ass. So it was a matter of like, nobody's going to believe that I didn't tell you unless we hate each other. Nobody's going to believe that because everyone knew how close Julie and I were. So it, it happened very natural for me to be like, we have to play up the fact that we're mad at each other. And at that point, we are like, we, there's the game's almost over. We're going to talk after the game. We know how close we are. We just have to really sell the fact that we hate each other. And it was, you know, it was funny because there were moments where it's like, we purposely would come to camp while everyone was having fun and cracking jokes. And we would purposely sit like a couple feet from each other and not talk and make it awkward. Like the most awkward <laughs> situations ever like we would purposely do that and it was fun but at the same time like it's very very hard to to know that we're mad at each other but then we also still need to talk strategy of like hey what's going on so that's why you see us like that moment where I'm walking and she follows me and I'm like keep walking because I'm about to laugh because <laughs> it was so awkward you know it was always awkward and we only had like every day we we only had like a water run to talk about strategy. We did not talk at all after that happened. How close did you come to telling Austin about the Drew vote? <laughs> the Drew vote? When Drew was going to go home. That was hard. That one was harder. Like I knew I was going to tell Julie and save her, but the Drew vote, I contemplated it all day. And I'm mm. very grateful that I didn't say anything because who would have, you know, there could have been, it could have been a different outcome, right? Like I, wouldn't be sitting here talking no. to you, but you like the, not you, but the audience sees one confessional in a span of a whole day, that entire time. I was like, cause when Kator and I said three, two, one, we knew like Julie and I knew that drew, we wanted drew gone. Cause drew was coming for Julie, but this was like a contemplating all day thing. That confessional, it was just one in the entire day, but I was a good like 60 percent like mm -hmm. i almost did tell him again i'm grateful i didn't tell him um but i almost did tell him because at that point in the game i was already thinking of like damn austin trusted me to tell me right and i don't want him to think that he's not my number one just because i saved judy because in my head i had obviously two number ones so did austin because it was drew it was me and drew um but i was going back and forth of like damn, Austin trusted me. Should I trust him? But then the thing that kept stopping me was I do trust him to tell him. It's not about not trusting him, but I don't trust that he wouldn't try to save his number one, just like I did for Julie. We were in the same exact scenario. So that's the only reason why I didn't tell him because he was going to try to save Drew and I knew he would be successful doing it. Um, but yeah. And then at that point in the game too, I was already thinking of like, damn, the game's almost over. Like, what if he doesn't trust me like outside of the game? Like there's so much, I know it sounds stupid, but there's so much that starts to taint, you know, from game to real world situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the final five, uh, when Julie goes home, uh, did you have a sense at that tribal council, like how close it came that you could have been the person to go out at the final five? No, I didn't have a sense. I would have been completely blindsided. So I really thought that Jake was going to use the idol on himself because I, he's the whole game. He needed to make a big move, big move, big move. His name was on the chopping block all the time. Like he thought he was going home for so many travels in a row. Um, and I really thought Julie was going to vote for Katora also. 
Um, we did talk about like voting Jake, but I was like, no, he's going to use the idol on himself. And one thing that wasn't shown in that final five was, which is why I think Katora made the right move. Like everyone's like, oh, Katora gave the game to D. Like, yeah, technically she did. But if you. And that's why you think she made the right move. Yes and no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess. For you, yeah. <laughs> For me, yes. Um, but in, in that tribal, I started crying because you see yeah. me crying at the end of tribal, but I was actually like bawling. And then Jeff, you know, Jeff loves to like dig deep. Jeff was like, D, why are you crying? And I said, I don't know, Jeff, which I did know. And then Jeff goes, D, where is this coming from? Digging a little bit deeper. And I go, I don't know, Jeff. I just know who's going home and I'm bawling tears. So Katora thinks to herself, well, D's right. not crying because of Austin because Austin's safe. D's not crying because of Jake. D's either crying for me or for Julie, which means one of us is going home, one of two. So it makes sense why she would switch it because had Jake played the idol for Julie, Katora would have been going home. Yeah. So, so I, in, in a way, your, <laughs> you know, your, your heart, you know, for Julie saved you that 100%. night. I, I thank God because I always prided myself in the game to have a very, you only ever saw me either cracking jokes, smiling or like straight face because part of my strategy in the game was especially a tribal for people to not know where my head's at. Cause if you know where my head's at, it's when you're going home, like when you're getting your torch snuffed. Um, and in that point, that was the first time that I broke down at tribal in front of other people. And I was very like hard on myself. Like, I feel so stupid. I can't believe I broke down, but really I feel like it had it not been because of my tears, like maybe it would have been a different outcome. Yeah. yeah. D I know we're up against it and I'd love to just know from you any other things that you want to make sure we know about your game in survivor 45. I'm trying to think, are there like burning questions that people have or something? Oh, I'm sure there are many, uh, but uh, we only have time for uh, a couple more. Any other like fun moments uh, from your time that we didn't get to see? Uh, there were so many fun moments. I really wish they would have shown Reba four more, but it would have been too obvious if they would have shown us together because um, we were constantly like stealing papayas and eating them at night. <laughs> like, yeah. We had a blast. Um I got into like an argument with Sifu, like early OG Reba, like chasing him with a stick down an island. It was so much fun. Like um, even with Kelly, we were like um, snorkeling and just there were so many, so many beautiful moments, like affirmation circles in OG Reba, which is why I think we were so tight and why I think, you know, aside from muscles, why I think we won a lot of the challenges because we were very tight as a group. Um there were so many fun moments. I I, yeah. I need to sit down and like journal everything. D, what was the point when you first realized that you were going to win the game? Um, or had a really good shot to win the game. Um, the Emily, the Emily blind side. I was like, all right, I can finally start because I feel like a lot of people make mistakes on Survivor where they look at the game so many more days in advance like so early on before even the merge. And it's like, no, you got to think of these things, but you can't get way too ahead of yourself. Um, Like you really have to detach from the outcome. But the Emily blind side for me was like, all right, I can start paving my path towards the end. But really when I knew I won was when I won the final challenge because I knew it would, it either, and Austin and I had this conversation, like the final Im immunity challenge has to be either you or me. And I knew that they would put me to fire. Like if Katora or, or Jake won, I'm going home because I'm going in fire. Like I, but when I won that, I was like, and you can see me getting, I, when I was stacking things up, I was like, I was about to start crying, but then I'm like, no D you cannot mess this up right at the end. Um, but I think that that was the moment that I knew I won the game. Cause I knew that I could like, I was very confident in going against anybody final three. Well, D, you did an incredible job. It was my pleasure to get to watch you and to get to talk with you a little bit about this whole experience for you. Uh, anything else you want to let people know? <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, but I don't think so. I, I guess if people ask, then we can do another one. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, so at some point down the road, I have no doubt that we'll uh, be able to talk more. Uh, where can people uh, keep up with you? Uh, backpacks still going good? Yeah, they're still going good. We're mass selling. Yeah. We, we mass sell more than customers. Look at so. you. It yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, but Rome with D on IG. R-O-A-M with D. <laughs> okay. D, thank you so much. Really appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk with you. Thanks to everybody uh, that CBS for giving us uh, this opportunity uh, to connect once again. And we will be back with more uh, Survivor 45 interviews. Make sure you subscribe. Go to robinsonwebsite.com slash subscribe. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.